A very warm welcome to all of you. Myself, Professor Nagar SS from KG Somaya College, Kopargao. So in today's lecture, we are going to start the second chapter from the analytical chemistry paper. The name of the chapter is Calculations Used in Analytical Chemistry. So in our previous lecture, we completed the chapter number first, that is introduction to the analytical chemistry after that this second important chapter we are going to start in this current lecture before starting this chapter please subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell icon in order to get the upcoming video lectures so first of all in this chapter which points we are going to study that we have to look in a brief so that key points we have to look towards the key points the first important point which we are going to study in the chapter is different methods used to calculate the results of quantitative analysis how to calculate the results of the quantitative analysis so for this purpose what are the different methods are there so that methods we have to study in this chapter the second important point which we are going to study in this chapter is the different system of units. How to express the different physical properties in suitable units. So for this purpose, what are the different system for units? So that system we have to study in this chapter. The next important point which we are going to study in this chapter is distinction between mass and weight. Whenever we say that a mass of a particular substance or weight of a particular substance so how to distinguish between them that important point we have to, we are going to study in this chapter the next important point is different ways for expressing concentration of solutions whenever we come across any particular solutions we know very well that a particular solute is dissolved in a particular solvent in order to form a solutions so whenever we want to express the amount of a solute in a particular solvent then how to express that particular amount in terms of its concentration so what are the different ways for expressing this concentration of a solutions so that important point we are going to study in this particular chapter number second so these are the four important key points which are included in this chapter number second now let us take these points one by one so the first important point from the chapter is the important units of measurements. Whenever we come across the quantitative analysis in analytical chemistry, we are going or we are interested to measure the different physical properties, then how to measure that properties in a suitable units. So for this purpose, there are several methods to express metric units of basic and derived physical quantities used in analytical chemistry so different methods are there for expressing this type of the metric units of basic and derived physical quantities so in order to derive may, uh, may express these units so what are the different units of measurements so that we have to study here so generally the metric units of physical quantities are expressed in international system of units that is SI units, CGS unit system and common unit system. So these are the three important unit system for expressing the physical quantities. First is SI system, second is a CGS and third is called as a common unit system. The international system that is a SI unit system is the most widely used system of measurement all over the world. So among these three, this international system that is a SI system of units is a widely used system of units for the different physical quantities all over the world. So commonly this system is nowadays used that is a SI system. Now let us look towards what is included in this SI unit system. So SI unit system is nothing but it stands for international system of units the long form of this SI is a it is an international system of units this system based on seven fundamental base units as shown below 
as far as this SI system is to be considered, it is nothing but a combination of seven fundamental base units. Now, what are that seven fundamental base units? So, these are the seven fundamental base units. Now, what it includes? So, it includes the seven fundamental base units. Now, what are that seven fundamental base units? Let us look towards one by one. The first is here K. This K is the first fundamental base unit. This K stands for Kelvin. And in this unit, we are going to express the temperature. The next important base unit is, this is M is here. This M stands for meter in which we are going to express the distance. The third is important base unit is capital A. And this A stands for ampere in which we are going to express the electric current. The next important base unit is S and in this S stands for second in which we are going to expressing the time. The next important base unit is a mole in which we are going to express the amount of a substance. So that is a mole is a unit for this expressing the amount of a substance. The next important base unit is a kilogram in which we are going to express the mass of a substance. And the next important base unit is a CD that is, stands for candela in which we are going to express the intensity of a light. So this is combination of seven fundamental base units. In general, it is called as the SI units. And these are the important unit system for expressing the physical quantities in analytical chemistry. Now, as far as this SI unit system is to be considered, from these seven fundamental base units, we may derive some another type of the units for expressing the different physical properties. So, from these seven fundamental base units, we may derive some another type of the base units. So, what are that? So, let us look towards them. So, the next units are common SI derived units from the previously previous seven fundamental base units. We may derive some another type of the units that are called as the SI derived units. So, what are that units? So, this table gives us an idea regarding the common SI derived units. So, let us look towards them. First is the quantity, second is unit and third is called its symbol. Now, as far as area is to be considered, how to express this area? So, for this purpose, the unit used is square meter and the symbol is a, this square meter m square. So, we can say that in order to express the area, we have to use the derived units as square meter. Its symbol is a meter square. The next physical property that is a volume. In order to expressing the volume, we have to use the derived units as a cubic meter and its symbol is a meter cube. The third important physical property is a density. For expressing this density, we have to use the SI derived units as kilogram or cubic meter and its symbol is a kg or meter cube. The fourth important physical quantity is a velocity. For this purpose, we use the unit as meter or second. And its symbol is a m or small s. The next important physical property is the angular velocity, which are, for this purpose, the unit used is radian or second. And its symbol is a small r or small s. The next important physical property is acceleration. For this purpose, the derived units used is a meter or second square and symbol is meter or second square. So in this way, we can say that these are the different physical quantities and these are their derived units and their respective symbols. So we can say that apart from the seven fundamental base units in a SI system, there are some more SI derived units that are very really useful for expressing the different physical quantities in particular units. So this is again important part for expressing different type of the physical properties. Now, after studying these two type of the different unit system, first is the SI unit system and second is called as the derived SI unit system. Now, at a certain instances, what happens? A very large value of a physical property is to be there. Now, in order to express that physical property in a very small integer, we have to use some prefixes for units. So what are that prefixes? So that we have to study here. 
So this table gives us an idea how to express a large quantity of a physical property in a very small integer. So for this purpose, different type of the prefixes are used. So let us look towards them one by one. If a fraction is 10 to the power minus one, the prefix uses DC and symbol for it is a small d. If the fraction is 10 to the power minus two, the prefix uses a centi and the symbol is small c. If the fraction is a 10 to the power minus three, the prefix uses a milli and the symbol is a small m. If a fraction is 10 to the power minus six, the prefix use is a micro and symbol is a mu. If a fraction is a 10 to the power nine, the prefix use is a nano and the symbol is a small n. If the fraction is a 10 to the power minus 12, the prefix use is a pico and symbol is a small p. While if the fraction is a 10 to the power minus 15, the femto is used and the symbol is a small f. On the other hand, if a fraction is a 10 to the power 1, it is the prefix, uh, prefix use is a deca and symbol is a small da. If fraction is a 10 to the power 2, the prefix use is a hecto, symbol is a small h. If the fraction is a 10 to the power 3, the prefix use is a kilo and symbol is a small k. If the fraction is a 10 to the power 6, it is a mega, symbol is a capital M. If it is a 10 to the power 9, the prefix is a giga and symbol is a capital G. If it is a 10 to the power 12, the prefix uses a tera and symbol is a capital T. If it is a 10 to the power 15, the prefix uses a peta and the symbol is a capital P. So we can say that these are the various type of the prefix, uh, prefixes used for units when a large physical quantity is there and that physical large physical quantity can be expressed by using such a type of the prefixes which is more suitable for such a type of the expressing this type of the large physical quantities. So in this lecture we studied here the different important basic points which are needed to study this chapter number two. So we start this chapter from the introduction regarding what key points we are, which we are going to study in this chapter. After that, we studied here the two different unit system. First is the SI unit system. Second is called as the SI derived unit system. After that, we studied here what are the seven fundamental base units? What are What is the meaning of that? And what is the symbol for each seven fundamental base units? After that, what are the derived units from the seven fundamental base units? After that, the important point which we just completed is a prefixes for units. So in this lecture, we studied here the simple introduction and the simple important points from this chapter number second. The remaining portion from this chapter we will take in a next lecture. So with this, I stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much.